All right, pre-trib rapture moment number 14. Now here's another question that you're going to get a lot if you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. And that is they'll say, aren't the wicked taken first to judgment? This is one that's brought up and they make it sound like, oh boy, that we've really disproved pre-trib rapturism now. No, actually it's very, very simple and actually a very poor argument to use for believing in a post-trib rapture. Let me show you. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24 says, And another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now if you're a Bible believer, right there, it's enough. The kingdom of heaven, in Matthew 11 verse 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, how can you have the kingdom of heaven being where God dwells, and the violent taking it by force? What is the kingdom of heaven then? It is the literal, physical, visible kingdom headquartered in Jerusalem. That's what it is. Okay? That Jesus Christ is going to one day rule and reign from. That's the kingdom of heaven. Continuing here in Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. So in other words, this whole parable is about that coming kingdom. We're going to see that. Matthew 13, 25 through 30 says, But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst, thou, didst not thou sow good seed in, the, in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, Come, er, excuse me, gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, so what do we see there? The wheat and the tares are growing together. Okay, the servants there, they come to their master and they say, Do you want us to, to weed out these tares? And he says, No, let them grow together, and then when I come, then I'll have you take the tares and gather them together to burn them, but the wheat will go into my barn. All right? That's what we see there. Now that's a parable of the kingdom of heaven, the coming millennial kingdom. It's not a parable for the rapture. I'm going to show you that. Now here are some big problems with that theory. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. This is the easiest way to debunk this thing. Are the wicked taken first to judgment in relation to the rapture? 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 18 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Hmm. The wicked are taken to judgment first. Uh, no, these are two different events. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What's going on in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 is not the same thing as what is going on in Matthew chapter 13. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-18 is not a parable of the kingdom of heaven. It is written to Christians to the body of Christ. That's very important to note that, to get that. Okay? Where do you see this thing in Matthew chapter 13 of gathering up the tares and burning them? Do you see any gathering of the wicked in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18? No. Do you see any burning being done? No. The gathering in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18 is the dead saints, the righteous dead saints, and the righteous living saints getting called up to be with the Lord. Both parts of the body of Christ. The dead, the living. There's no wicked. Nobody's going and being burned. So you say, but we have to make all the events the same event in the Bible. No dispensations, no differences. It all has to line up. You're a fool. You don't know the Bible. If you have been led to believe that, you have been fooled, swindled, conned, okay? You've been lied to. Plain and simple. But let's continue here. I'm going to go to the next page here. 
So then what is this judgment that's mentioned in Matthew chapter 13? What is this judgment that's going on there? The wheat and the tares, the tares are taken and burned and the wheat go into the barn. What is this? Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 through 46 says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, second coming, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. Gathered. That's the job of the saints. When we come down to rule and reign with Jesus Christ, we come down there, and we go and we gather the nations. The people that actually survived the time of Jacob's trouble. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Oh, wait a second. Do you see now? Saved versus lost? Sheep and goats. See, we're not dealing with the same thing that's going on over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. There it's all, all saved people. Dead saints, living saints. Here it's sheep and goats. Two different groups. Let's continue. Verse 33, And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the King, Jesus Christ, there the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the, one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Okay? Then shall he also say, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, the goats, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in, person, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. Now look at verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. The tares are going to be burned. But the righteous into life eternal. They go into the barn. The tares are gathered. Remember what it said there in verse 32? They go, the holy angels come back with Jesus Christ and they go out to gather these people. To go out and gather the nations. They bring them. Both wheat and tares, sheep and goats, they bring them together. And then they say, okay, sheep, you're a sheep, go that way. You're a goat, go this way. Tare, wheat. And then he says, you sheep here, you're going into the barn. You tares there, into the lake of fire to be burned. That's what's going on in Matthew chapter 13. It's not the rapture. And you get some lie, liar out there, some non-dispensational liar, and he's trying to brainwash you against the pre-tribulation rapture. He's trying to steal your rewards. You know, you're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ, not for the Antichrist, not for the New World Order and all this other stuff. You're supposed to be looking for Jesus Christ. But some liar comes along and he deceives you into not looking for Jesus Christ and into not trying to win souls and not trying to lay up treasures in heaven, trying to get ready to survive and endure to the end. That's what these liars will do. And what they'll do is they'll take portions of Scripture that have nothing at all to do with the rapture and they'll put them down and say, this is the rapture right here. The wicked are taken first to judgment. See, so the rapture doesn't work. No, the rapture works out just fine. The Bible teaches, the King James Bible teaches a pre-tribulation rapture in spite of what the false prophet told you. Okay? They say there's not one verse of Scripture. There are no good arguments for a pre-trib rapture. They're lying to you. I just gave you another one. Okay? And that's number 14. Number 15 is coming up, and I got another one after that too. There are plenty of arguments for a pre-tribulation rapture. Do not be deceived. 